In today's video, we're going to discuss crowdfunded technology. Yep, it's going to be another one of those videos. Let's get started. Welcome back to Makers Muse, guys. My name is Angus. It's a lovely, warm Sunday evening, and I think it's time to discuss Kickstarter. So last year in 2016, I spent a lot of time analyzing Kickstarter projects, but I think we've gotten to a point now where crowdfunded technology really needs a new direction and a new, I suppose, embodiment on how to make this work because it's become exceedingly clear that there is something broken with crowdfunded technology projects. And I was spurred on to make this video by Tico. So this was one of the Kickstarter darling 3D printer projects of 2015. Yo, it's a lovely looking printer, exceedingly cheap, and it got over or almost two, uh, three million dollars of funding for this machine. That is thousands of 3D printers that Tico had to deliver. And my buddy Dustin, the Jatman, has actually got a beta version Tico he's been testing and doing live streams with for a very long period of time. So Tico went silent for a little while and I did ask him what was going on and he said their updates had slowed and he had unanswered emails. Well, it seems that they are actually experiencing some sort of financial or legal issue. And at this stage, it looks pretty dubious that most of the backers will ever see their printer. The thing is though, this is not a new phenomenon. Crowdfunded projects have always had a chance of failure, especially when there's hardware involved. Let me remind you guys of the Buccaneer. This is the Buccaneer. This was a low cost 3D printer project that went live in 2013. That's right, like four years ago, where they predicted it would be released and sent to backers in August or October of 2013. However, that did not occur. The Buccaneer was a failure. They ran out of money, or so they said, and the machines didn't deliver. But why are these campaigns failing? Why are they failing to deliver and then folding? Well, I've spent a long time in this field and I now have a lot of industry connections, so I have a lot of communication with companies who are doing crowdfunded projects. And it's becoming kind of clearer to me as to why the actual Kickstarter system of crowdfunding of technology projects is actually completely broken. And I'd like to explain why in this video. But to do so, let's look at how you would traditionally bring a product to market. You are either one of two things. You are either a large corporation with lots of funding in R&D to develop that product, or you're an individual such as an inventor where you have various options. You have not much money, therefore you need to take a loan out to develop said product and bring it to market. Or you could sell the product idea to a larger company and maybe take a commission, that's always a route. But either way, you need to take a risk either by losing control of your idea or by taking a risk by taking a loan out or putting substantial money behind your idea, your vision. You have this idea and you have this drive, but that's the thing, you have personal risk in your idea, bringing it to life. Therefore, you need to have a lot of belief that that idea will actually take off. But crowdfunding is a bit different because you don't need any of that financial risk. You don't need to sell your idea to a larger company and you don't need to take a loan out, for example, and then put your personal assets on the line. You just have an idea, you put it out there and then other people can pledge towards it, which sounds fantastic. It's almost utopian in a way because like, you know, the users get what they want, they get a product early and the individual gets what they want, they get to put a product out there without any risk. But as we have seen, it's definitely not a good solution because they don't have the accountability. And just to drive that home a little bit more, this is Pirate3D's current website. Right now today, basically Pirate3D went on to sell 3D printers to individuals, not the backers who paid the money to get started. No, they actually, you can buy a product right now. I can buy a Pirate3D Buccaneer from their website in 2017 right now. Well, they've actually got a new one, the Buccaneer Plus, wonderful. But the original backers of the campaign, well, they're still commenting today and pretty much saying stuff like, this is outright fraud. And he's right, this is pretty much fraud, but there's no legal ramifications for what they've done. Some of you may remember the original Pebble smartwatch from a few years ago, which was successfully crowdfunded for an immense amount, something like $10 million, and it did deliver, albeit with some delays. Well, this is proof 
that even the big ones can fall. This is the Pebble 2 campaign, and as you might have seen two months or so ago, Pebble was uh, acquired, I suppose, and essentially folded. And as is evidence in these comments, a lot of people uh, have been left with nothing. They haven't gotten their money back, and there's never going to be any further development on this product. So even if a campaign raises, in this case, $12 million, you're not guaranteed for it to deliver. And that's because that $12 million is kind of a false figure. When you have crowdfunding, you have the fees that the website takes. Kickstarter takes a massive cut. Then you have Amazon payments and credit card fees taking a further cut. So you have roughly 10, if not more percent of that funding gone straight away. So roughly, in this case, $1.27 uh, million dollars was in immediately stripped away from this campaign. Then you have the development. They might have a prototype and you do need a functional prototype to be demonstrated on Kickstarter, but that's basically it. You could strap something together, make it look funky with a 3D printed case and then do your campaign and attract millions of dollars of funding. Doesn't mean you know how to make that product in bulk. And that's the issue. You need to take that product and mass produce it. And that's when the issues start happening. When you start spending the big bucks, and then problems arise. You might run into problems with safety, you might run into problems with battery sizes, or you know, capabilities of processors. Basically, you might have to design something that can't actually realistically be made at the price point you offered it to your backers, which presumably would have been a early bird special discount price on what your theoretical recommended retail price will be down the line. So you're trying to build a new product based on actually realistically quite a small amount of money because you have to deliver that product to thousands of people. That's why this figure of a goal and like exceeding it is actually an illusion. A project could reach its goal comfortably and then do quite well and a project could exceed its goal by a hundred times and fail just because the sheer amount of people they suddenly have to fulfill products for. You can actually set limits on how many products you're going to fulfill, but of course, human nature and greed kicks in. You want more money, therefore you want more backers. So people rarely set these limits on Kickstarter, which is a bit of a shame. And then of course we have the scam project. So this is the next D1, first multi-material and electronics 3D printer. A few of you guys reached out to me to talk about this project and I flat out refused because I didn't believe it was a real project. I didn't believe it was a real product. I've worked in this industry for a long time and the ability to print multi-material is only just starting to happen in very expensive resin systems and multi-electronics is kind of happening in a rudimentary way but to combine them into this little neat looking uh, nicely designed box is quite frankly snake oil in my opinion and a lot of the people on the internet thought so as well and to be honest the real icing on the cake was this attempt to placate everyone in saying that we have these high resol resolution photos of our prints and I particularly like this one here and then I backer pointed out that they actually had designed that and uploaded it onto Shapeways quite a while ago which is this one here and you can quite clearly see it's exactly the same model they've just bought it from Shapeways and claimed that their machine printed it. So that campaign got suspended but only after the community rallied together to prove it was fake to Kickstarter to get it shut down. Border for Campaign does get shut down. This is the Scarp laser racer that was also suspended on Kickstarter because people pointed out many flaws in how it could function. Well, they just went to the second option for crowdfunding, which is Indiegogo, which is pretty much rife with scams these days, in my opinion. And they got 500,000. And as you can probably guess, no such products have been delivered as yet. And I don't think they ever will be. So does Kickstarter actually even care about accountability? Well, they uploaded this blog in September of 2012 talking about it and really if you get down to it the answer is no but let's go through how they phrase it so does Kickstarter screen projects before they launch yes they do give a quick review to projects which uh, I've been a part of in some cases but they don't check into the backing the background of the individuals nor do they check into the legitimacy of the technology being proposed they've got too many that's fair enough they've got too many people coming with campaigns every day. They just do a quick review to make sure it's not a flat out uh, scam impossible. And then they will make it released. But they don't check in case, in the case of uh, these crowdfunded technology projects, they don't really check too deeply. You just need to have a kind of working prototype that looks okay, and then they'll just let it, let it do its thing. And this is where they wipe their hands completely. Who is responsible for completing a project as promised? It is the creator's responsibility to complete the project. 
Kickstarter is not involved in the development of the projects themselves. And that's fair enough, Kickstarter shouldn't be involved in the project itself, but they should be involved in the delivery of the actual product at the end. And here it gets really kind of fluffy. What should creators do if they're having problems completing a project? If problems come up, creators are expected to post a project update, explain the situation, share their story, speed bumps, all of that. Because yes, projects do usually go be, uh, their timeline does usually stretch, that's normal. But in terms of this, they're pretty much saying like it's okay if you're having problems just to share it. Like, yeah, we've got no money, that's all good. And sorry about you know your pledge. Thank you for waiting two years, but you're never gonna see anything again. And then the bottom here, they're saying that is a creator legally obligated to fulfill the promises of a project? And this is where it gets kind of ridiculous. They're saying yes here, but I have never in my time of looking at crowdfunded projects, and I'm happy to be corrected here, I've never seen Kickstarter legally force a project to refund or deliver rewards to backers. It seems to be, in my opinion, that Kickstarter is happy to take their cut and then wash their hands of the rest of the project's future and move on to the next group of suckers. So it's pretty clear if you've paid any attention to Kickstarter technology projects over the last couple of years that there is something very much wrong with it and Kickstarter doesn't really care because they haven't changed anything drastically. They've maybe implemented a few small tweaks in their terms of service, but really it's up to you as a backer to back the right horse, <laughs> back the right campaign and then hopefully get a project delivered in the end. But really, they don't care if it fails or not, and that's the big issue. That's where we need some sort of change, because at this point, most people I have met will not back a crowdfunded project because in their minds, it's going to fail. And that is quite sad, in my opinion, because there is definitely some projects out there that have delivered amazing rewards for very low money to very early bird backers. And a fantastic example of that would be the Cetus. So it's really interesting to look at this project as an example of a project that has pretty much been delivered. They're still kind of doing fulfillment, but most people have gotten their Cetus printers and for the most part, they're really happy with them. Actually, this one's printing right now behind me and it's almost silent, which is nice. But the thing about Cetus is if you did any research behind them, you would have realized that they're actually Tier Time, which is a very large established Chinese 3D printing company. So that gives you a clue as to why they had no real problem with fulfillment. In my opinion, they probably were already manufacturing these things when the campaign went live. However, they only raised $169,000, which is pocket change compared to all the big guns on Kickstarter, such as the Micro M3D 3D printer, and of course the Tico. So why is that? Well, it pretty much comes down to marketing, unfortunately. People are won over by flashy videos and graphics, and the, the Cetus campaign video was pretty rubbish. It had a non-English speaker over, overviewing the machine and doing the voiceover. It had some nice shots, but it really didn't have that punch that people want to see. Well, it didn't have that impulse where you think, wow, I really need this now. Therefore, it didn't get that much money. And it wasn't a big name. They chose to choose Cetus 3D instead of going with Tier Time, which people are familiar with with the ups. I'm not too sure why they did that. But really, this project, in my opinion, was actually quite underfunded for the machine that it represented. And another example would be the Block Zero. So Blocks Tech sent me a assembled machine to test out, and I actually found it to be a really decent little machine but they didn't even reach their goal. And the main reasons behind this were threefold. Basically, they are on Indiegogo. As I said before, Indiegogo is a very poor substitute for the rep rep reputation of Kickstarter. You know, I think projects fail on Kickstarter. Indiegogo, it's like, <laughs> you gotta be pretty careful of that. And they weren't native English speakers. They're from Portugal. So although their machine was fantastic and it does work very well, and they probably wouldn't have had any issue rolling out to a small, like, 50,000 or 100,000 goal. They didn't quite get there. Actually, they didn't even get close. They got 13,000 raised. And that's mostly, in my opinion, because it wasn't on Kickstarter and it wasn't polished as well as a lot of the American projects were. And of course, there's projects that kind of do 50-50. They'll deliver or half deliver and the results will be subpar. And the 101 Hero definitely was that. But I must say, at least this project did deliver. But this project raised $434,000, which is ridiculously, ridiculously high compared to the Cetus, for example, which is a far superior machine. And I think it's just because it got that wow factor. People were like, wow, it's a cheap machine. 
and then they just pledge for it. But in, in reality, as we're finding out, if you look at these, uh, these comments, receive my printer, dead, doesn't work, put it together, it doesn't move, crap. And then people saying, no printer, no news, no hope. This is my last time on Kickstarter. And I feel this is what's happened. We've reached the point where no one is going to be comfortable backing a Kickstarter project for a technology project unless there's some sort of ramifications for failure. So there's, I'm not proposing a solution in this video. I want to start a discussion as to pushing this idea forwards to make crowdfunded technology for early bird uh, adopters possible because I don't want to see it die. Some, in some cases, technologies can only be produced if the community puts their money where their mouth is and says, we want this. But at the same time, I don't want to see people ripped off and scammed. So I don't know. Let's look at how, for example, regular loans work from a bank. You have collateral. You have to put your house up or your car up. Something that is in place in case things go wrong. Maybe something like that needs to exist for these projects. Maybe campaigns need to be need to cost ten thousand dollars that go into a uh, a deposit box that you only get back after your after everything's delivered. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the description of this video, guys. This is more of a think piece and something just I needed to reflect on because it's been happening for a long time. As I showed you with the Buccaneer 3D printer, that was years ago, 2013. It, it, the campaign launched and. They never delivered. There's been straight out scams that luckily have been stopped in some cases and in some other cases probably haven't been. But I would like to hear your thoughts as to how we can make crowdfunded technology possible in the future and how we can stop it, uh, stop people from just losing their money to these people who really don't know what they're doing when it comes to funding an idea. They might be able to make one machine, but then scale it up to a million dollars of funding. They got no chance. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video here on Maker's Muse. Sorry it's a little bit rambly, but that's usually how these ones are. And if you did enjoy it, please subscribe. I'd love to have you jump on board to this channel. We do lots of 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, and sometimes think pieces like this. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.